If you're learning to play the violin, you are going to have to be patient. Even getting the most basic motor patterns necessary for baseline level technique can take at least a year to solidify, if not longer, and then everything you build on top of that follows the same timeline trajectory. However, that being the case, there are occasionally little things, little changes in mindset or even adjustments of position that can suddenly fix technical problems like that. And today I'm going to show you something that I recently discovered that I've been applying to every single one of my private students that has been doing amazing things in fixing issues in their left hands. I'm Tobias Murphy, and this is Murphy Music Academy. <laughs> If you like the video, go ahead and like the video. If you haven't subscribed, you're going to want to go ahead and do that. And of course, if you want to have musical and educational epiphanies delivered straight to your front door rather than waiting around for me to make another video, then you want to sign up for lessons at Murphy Music Academy with either myself or my assistant Brian, either using Skype or if you live in the Southeast Michigan area, in person. So go ahead and shoot an email to admin at murphymusicacademy.org if you're interested in that. Link will be in the description below, and of course, the first lesson is always free. Now, on to the actual subject of the video. Whenever I start to teach someone, one of the first things I usually do is make sure that they have all the basics of their technique set up. A lot of people come to study with me because they have issues with their technique that they want fixed. Now, when it comes to the left hand, I've always had a way of describing the way you should not approach putting the fingers down onto the strings, which is what I often see people do, which is making a sort of motion with the fingers that mimics the closing of a fist. Using this type of finger action will often cause the problem of the wrist coming in, which is of course one of the biggest first time violin no-nos, as well as a limited amount of flexibility and a lot of tension in the hand, as well as causing the angle of the fingers to go over the strings and pull the strings a lot more to the side instead of keeping the fingers right on top of the strings. The problem is, is that unless I actually picked up the violin and demonstrated, I didn't really have that clear of a concept or example of what you were supposed to do, only what you shouldn't do. The only way I could show what you should do was to actually just pick up the violin and say, okay, you should feel, you know, this kind of leveraging against the thumb rather than this type of thing. But if I took the violin away, I couldn't show you as clearly what to do as I could what not to do. That is, until today. A few weeks ago, I was working with a student and trying to get them to activate their thumb more in leveraging their fingers while doing vibrato. And suddenly it hit me the best way to describe how the proper finger action is supposed to work. If closing your fingers as a fist is what you're not supposed to do, then what you are supposed to do is this, which is the same feeling as tapping all of your fingers to your thumb. Aside from the fact that this makes the idea of leveraging the fingers against the thumb a lot more clear, and leveraging the fingers against the thumb is an absolutely indispensable aspect of left-hand violin technique, another great thing about thinking of your fingers moving this way against the thumb like this is that it keeps this part of the hand nice and loose and open, as opposed to the naturally clenched and tight motion of doing this. Now, when I'm playing the violin, I can't actually move my thumb around like this to match each and every finger as I could like this. So how this actually works is going to require a little bit of explanation, though most of this ends up being very, very intuitive. No matter what thumb position you use, whether it's high thumb, low thumb, or under thumb, once you put your thumb on the neck of the violin, you need to imagine that the entire neck, fingerboard, and strings are all just an extension of your thumb, and you're just going to tap the fingers the same way you would have tapped your thumb right here. And uh, that's basically it. It really is that simple, and I encourage you to try it because I was shocked at just how incredibly effective this concept was for my beginning students all the way up to my more advanced students. For the beginning students, it just basically fixed your basic beginning student left hand problems. You know, people tend to have their wrists come in like that and you're telling them for a year at a time, okay, you know, until they finally get it. Well, once I had them think of putting their thumb uh, against their fingers like this and then doing the same thing when holding the violin, suddenly no more problem with the wrist clenching in because the whole wrist coming in thing is based on doing this motion and not this motion. Once you introduce this idea, 
that problem goes away. For those of my students who are working on improving their vibrato, suddenly, now that they have a better understanding of leveraging their thumb against their fingers, suddenly they have a lot more control over their vibrato. The only students that this didn't make an almost instantaneous difference in either their intonation, their left hand setup, their articulation, or their vibrato, was those students that have got a couple that do have a tendency to clench right between the side of the thumb and the side of the hand. And we kind of worked on that for a couple more weeks after introducing this idea. And once we got that a little bit more worked out doing some loosening exercises, they were as good as gold. Now, I'm as shocked as you are that this video is as short as it is, but this idea really is that incredible and that simple. And yeah, I'm used to making 16 minute long videos and this is all she wrote. So the last thing I wanna say is to practice this, besides just as a general mindset thing that is going to help all of your playing, to kind of get a better sense of this, especially if you have a tendency to clench, is to practice either sedchik or shradiak exercises, thinking about this finger motion, and especially if you tend to clench, practice it with literally no pressure added to the strings. So whatever pressure the fingers themselves put onto the strings, when you do this, just tapping the strings like so, that is the pressure you use. It might sound a little bit wispy, it might sound just plain bad, but not an insignificant number of my students that I've tried this with, they actually get a clear sound because now the finger is a lot more stable, which is actually more important to creating a clear sound than pressure. And we want to use as little pressure as possible on the strings as we can get away with because we're always trying to play as loosely and cleanly as possible. So if I do this, Believe it or not, you could, you could stick paper underneath my strings when I do that. So I'm thinking of that in the exact same way, just tapping the fingers to the thumb, and I'm adding no extra pressure to the strings, and I'm still getting a fairly clear sound. So as an exercise, that's a really, really good thing to do. And yeah, just add this idea to your playing, and you're going to see some incredible results very, very quickly. Of course, remember, everything else in violin is going to take several years to develop. So you get this one, take it. Anyway, I've been Tobias Murphy for Murphy Music Academy, always here to remind you that there is, of course, no pleasure in mediocrity. Happy practicing, and I'll see you next time.